So excited to be with you today, and we're going to be continuing on on the subject extraordinary. It is amazing how God takes ordinary people, <laughs> and He does the extraordinary in and through them. We've been looking at the book of Acts, and we're going to be continuing on today. And I want to talk with you from the subject specifically for today, get up. <laughs> yes, that, that's what I'm telling you. Get up. <laughs> now, you maybe you're in bed right now and you're like, yes, I do need to get up. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Or maybe you're on the couch and you're like, yeah, I do need to get up at some point and exercise or make the kiddos uh, some, some breakfast or some lunch or some dinner. Uh, that, that's not what I'm talking about. There, there are things in life that have knocked many of us down. I don't know what has you down today. Maybe it's a, a relationship challenge. Maybe it's a, a, an internal struggle that has you down. Maybe it's a financial crisis and you're like, I'm down. And today you are going to realize that you're going to get up. We're going to the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 32. It says, as Peter traveled around the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydda. Now, in reaching out to others as a follower of Jesus, we're, we're called to not help ourselves only. We're, we're called to, to reach out and help others. And yet, in reaching out and helping other people, we need people in our lives who, who will invest into us. We, we need people around us who are life-giving. I've talked with so many people these last few years who just feel depleted. <laughs> do, you, do you feel depleted? <laughs> and some people think, well, it's just, it's everything going on in the world. It's, it's all the COVID lockdowns. It's, it's everything going on with all the chaos, with violence, and, and people feel depleted, and not just feel depleted, but like are depleted. Uh, maybe it's because we're not around the right people. <laughs> There's many different kinds of people. It, Lindsay is people energized, where she just gets around people and she has more energy. I'm a little bit the opposite, where if I'm around people, at some point I start to feel drained. Now, now, that's not, though, what I'm talking about here. What, what I'm talking about is the kind of people who are around you. Because even if you're not a people person, the right kind of people in your life, healthy people, will give you energy. Not just like energy, like a five-hour energy drink or, or a cup of coffee. I, I'm talking about actually adding to your life. Now, I'm not saying that, that you need to abandon your old crew, but we need to embrace a healthy tribe. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. It is amazing, as in this last season, so many people isolated, <laughs> they, and then all of a sudden they feel isolated and they feel discouraged, and they feel down. Culture likes to tell us that, that we don't need anyone, but, but we do. Needing people, it, it doesn't make us weak. It just makes us human. Faith, whether on campus or online, is a place to belong, and it's a place to become. <laughs> Not just where you're like, oh yeah, I, I have some energy, you know, this is like, I, I, I'm just, you know, like feel a little, just a little bit buzzy for a few, you know, hours, like after a five hour energy drink or a cup of coffee. No, no, I'm talking about where you're like, oh, I'm passionate to continue moving forward in the life God has called me to live and taking the path God is leading me on. Verse 33, it says, there he found a man named Aeneas who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. 
Are you paralyzed? Maybe not physically, relationally, <laughs> or financially. When you're paralyzed, you, you can feel trapped. Maybe he felt trapped in his own body. Maybe you feel trapped in a toxic relationship. Or you feel trapped in, in, in a situation financially where, where you don't see any way out. He'd been in that condition for eight years. That's a, that's a long time. <laughs> and yet we want to compare. We, we live in a culture of comparison where when we compare, we can always find someone who, who hasn't been dealing with it as long as we have. Or we can always find someone who's been dealing with it longer than we have. <laughs> it's like, well, the, there was the woman with the issue of blood. She'd been, she'd been suffering for 12 years. Well, but the individual at the Pool of Bethesda, he, he'd been in his condition for 38 years. And you're like, well, but, but the individual in Acts 3 was lame since birth. We like to compare, and it's like, wait, hold on. Like, I, you, you've only been in, in therapy for two months. I've been in therapy for two years. That's nothing. <laughs> or you're like, wait, you're on your first round of chemo? That's nothing. My aunt is on her sixth round of chemo. Like, we, we like to compare how many hours, how many days, how many weeks, how many months, how many years. For someone, maybe it's been how many decades. And in the struggle, time can seem to stand still. So it's like, it's been eight years, but it just seems like I, I don't even know what, what day it is. Sometimes it's, it's not just the pain we're going through. It's the pain of no progress. <laughs> like, I could deal with this it, if I was seeing that, that there was progress. If I, if I could see that, that things were actually getting better. If I could see that things were actually moving forward. And, and maybe you're today, you're, you're severely frustrated, not just because of what you're going through, but how long you've been going through it. And yet I want you to know that your current reality doesn't have to be your permanent reality. You can get up. Now, now Aeneas here was probably a Christian. You're like, well, why would you say that? Because Peter was there to visit Christians. He's a Christian, yet he was crippled. Anyone, can you relate where you're like, I'm saved, but I'm struggling. I'm a believer, but I'm, I'm bound. Sometimes we think as Christians, we are exempt from life's problems. Oh, when I, when I accepted Jesus into my life, it meant that I was never, ever going to get sick again. Really? <laughs> when I accepted Jesus into my life, it meant that my marriage was never going to have problems. Really? When I accepted Jesus into my life, it meant that my debt was going to disappear and all of the sudden I was going to have plenty of resources. Wait, what? <laughs> and you might be thinking, well, if why be a Christian if I'm going to struggle anyway? <laughs> it's like, wait, I thought I was never going to be sick. I never was going to be in debt. I never was going to struggle. Wait, why be a Christian? It's not because it makes life easy. We follow Jesus because it gives us meaning and purpose, and we find our true destiny in life. And as you're following Jesus, you can discover that, that you can be hurt, but you can still help other people. That you can be struggling in life, and yet you can still serve other people. Here's what I want you to realize. You can be paralyzed in one area and still powerful in so many other areas. I want to say that again. You could be paralyzed in one area and yet incredibly powerful in so many other areas. Sometimes we make the one thing everything and we're like, everything's wrong. Really? Is it everything or is it just that one thing? Everything is a struggle right now. Is it everything or is it just that, 
that one thing. I get it might be a challenge. It might be a struggle. But just keep following Jesus. Following Jesus isn't about avoiding pain. It's about embracing purpose. And you were created on purpose for a purpose, and you are going to get up. Verse 34, Aeneas Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. (laughs) He doesn't say, how are you feeling today? Tell me about what the last eight years have been like. What's going on with you emotionally? He says, Jesus gets right to it. Jesus Christ heals you. Get up. (laughs) That's for someone today. And roll up your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up. I want you to know words have power. Too often, we just use our words loosely. We talk <laughs> without really thinking about what we're saying. We, 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 we just say things. But I love it because he doesn't just speak about the problem. He speaks to the problem. You see, the power of life and death are in the tongue. God spoke this world into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke dry ground into existence, and the ocean, and the the, the creatures in the ocean, and, and all the animals on the ground, and spoke stars into the sky, and yet we just use our words loosely. Peter doesn't talk about the problem, doesn't talk about how long he's been struggling with the problem. He speaks to the problem and doesn't say, oh, I'm Peter, uh, you're going to be healed. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ, it's Jesus Christ heals you. I want you to know, I can't heal you. I can't cause you to get up today, but Jesus Christ can. You see, we're, we're not here to draw attention to ourselves. We're here to draw attention to Jesus. We live in a culture where we want a bunch of followers on social media for us. We live in a culture where where we want our name to be known. We live in a culture where we want the spotlight to be on us. But it's like, no, it's about if, if there's a spotlight, let's make sure it's shining on Jesus because that's where true hope and that's where the power to get up is really found. I want you to know that the problem might be great, But Jesus is greater, and you're going to get up. Get up. Get up. What do you need to get up from? Maybe you need to get up from that hurt. I get you've been hurt, but you can get up. You're like, but but, but the sickness that that my cousin's been been dealing with, you you know what? The power to get up. You're like, you don't realize the failures in my life. Some people never get up from their failures. You're going to get up from those failures. You might be, I'm so disappointed right now. You're going to get up from that disappointment. He says, get up and roll up your mat. Why? Too many people leave the past (laughs) only to go back to it, only to go back to that mat. You're like, well, how does that apply to me? You broke up with that toxic boyfriend, girlfriend, but you still have their number in your contacts. (laughs) Roll up your mat means you need to delete that number. (laughs) Forget it. Don't have it memorized. (laughs) What does that mean? It means that that mat you used to be on was that addiction. And, and now you're, you're no longer accessing that content online, but you still have access and you haven't created that, that full separation. You, you, you need to roll up your mat. You say, I, I'm leaving the past and I'm not going to go back to that mat. <laughs> Why do so many people go back? Because maybe it's more comfortable on the mat. All of a sudden, get up. Now, now I have responsibilities. I, on the mat, I, I, I didn't have responsibilities. On the mat, people took care of me. We live in a culture where increasingly people just want handouts. Don't, don't want to have to work for anything. Just want it to be handed to them 
just because they're alive. Now, now certain people need help, but those who are able-bodied and can get up, you, oh, you, you, need to, you need to get up and you can get up. You can get up from that debt. You can get up for, from that divorce. You may have been down for a long time, but now is the time for you to get up. Verse 35, all those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. This is the ultimate show and tell. I remember in elementary school when we would get to bring things on certain days and it would be show and tell. And you'd get to take it out of the box and get to show the class what it is that you were presenting. And you had to describe it. It, it. it was show and tell. And you were just so excited normally because you're like, I can't wait to show people and tell people about this. That's what our lives are when we get up. When you, when you were addicted for all those years and you got up <laughs> in the name of Jesus, you're a living show and tell. We, we, when you went through all that you went through, your life is, is show and tell to how good God is. It says in Joppa, though, there was a disciple named Tabitha, and she was always doing good and helping the poor. <laughs> Wait, hold on. If people would describe my life, I don't know if they would say that. Always? Maybe he sometimes is doing good and helping the poor, helping the, the needy, encouraging people. What about your life? Is it sometimes? Is it, is it, is it never? It, this is an amazing individual. And yet in verse 37, it says, about that time she became sick and died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. This was a, a common custom to prepare the body for burial. Uh, reading this, I'm like, why her? What? Why Tabitha? Out of all the people who could have got sick and died, why her? I remember when, when my grandpa Chuck died at, at 68 years old, and he was the one who was always helping people and always encouraging people. It was like, wait, hold why him? He was the one who was always doing good. There's a lot of people who weren't, but, but why him? My, my uncle Bob passed away in the last few years. I was like, wait, hold on. Even younger than my grandpa was I like, why, why him? He was doing good and, and he was helping people. Do you ever wonder why bad things happen to good people? And we wonder why. And we could talk about the, the reality of living in a fallen world. And, and we can talk about free will and free choice, but, but is, that, is that really gonna solve things? There's a better question to ask. Sometimes we're, we're not asking uh, questions that are really gonna move us forward. You, you see, there's a better question. And if you're, you're wondering right now, why is this happening to me? Why did they walk out on me? Why did they let me go? Why, why, what, what if there's a better question to ask? What can Jesus do through this? You see, there's a difference between answers and the answer, and Jesus is the answer. What if you shift your focus from why it happened to what God can work through this because you're gonna get up? Now, it says that Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter, they're saying, Peter, come, we need you. Maybe they wanted Peter to come and, and to comfort the people. I think it's important that as followers of Jesus that we comfort the hurting and the broken and those that that are going through challenging times, whether it be hospital visits or, or funerals. And, and sometimes when, when people are going through trauma and people are going through difficulty, 
we we don't show up because we don't know what to say. You know, oh, I wanted to go visit, but I don't know what to say. Or I wanted to send them a message, text them, or I wanted to call them, but I don't know what to say. So sometimes it's not what we say. Sometimes it's it's just showing up. If you go visit, it's just just sitting with them. If it's a message, just letting them know, hey, send them a message. Hey, I'm praying for you. Include a Bible verse. If you call them, just, just give them a call and say, I'm just thinking about you and just want you to know uh, uh, I'm praying for you. It's important that, that we comfort the hurting. Or maybe they wanted him there because they're like, well, maybe she can be raised back to life. But I don't think that's really the case. Well, while, while they did lay the, their sick in the streets at one point for Peter, when he was walking through, when Case's shadow fell on them, they would be healed. This is, she's not sick. She's dead. They, they're preparing to bury her body. Just like you're preparing <laughs> to, to file for divorce. Just like you're preparing to move on from that dream. So sometimes we're preparing to bury something when Jesus is preparing for resurrection. It's a change of plans. <laughs> sometimes I tell Lindsay, change of plans. I know that that was the plan, but there's been a change of plans. Guess what? There's a better opportunity. Guess what? Something new. Even when life knocks you down with Jesus, you're never knocked out and you are going to get up. It says, so when Peter went with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and the outer clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. This is the weeping widows. I imagine this is not a pretty cry. You know, sometimes see people like post pictures, so sad, so disappointed, and they'll have this like sad look and maybe a little tear running down their cheek. I imagine this is like an ugly cry. <laughs> you know, people like they go into an ugly cry where it's just like their eyes are swollen. They're just, they're, they, they, they can hardly talk and, and they got snot coming down their nose, you know, from their nose, almost going into their mouth. It's just like, wait, wait this is like, I imagine an ugly cry. And they're walking down memory lane. People do this. Oftentimes, after someone passes away, leading up to the funeral, and it's just talking about, oh, do you remember this memory and, and that memory? And it's, it, it's all, the, all the good times. I, 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 I want you to know to not let the hopelessness around you diminish the hope that is within you. It's difficult right now. You're like, my, my hope is dissipating because of everything going on with culture. And I'm looking at, at this happening and then the schools and then I turn on the news and it's like I, I, I'm getting so discouraged. I also want you to know to not let the pain of the crowd paralyze you and cause you to to keep you from the power of Christ. There, there is power to get up, but pain can paralyze. Yet the place of great pain, that same place can be the place of great power, and you're going to get up. It says, Peter sent them all out of the room. Hey, ladies, <laughs> out. Then he got down on his knees and he prayed. What? Why did he send them out? Maybe he didn't want any doubters. He's like, it's, it's okay to cry, but I need faith-filled people in this room. Some of you right now are surrounded by people that are, that are, that are full of fear, that, that are full of doubt, that you're surrounded by, by discouragement. Sometimes we just need to send people out. <laughs> Who do you need to send out of your room right now in order for you to get up? Who, who do you need to say is like, hey, I, 
I get this is hard, but but you're going to need to step out of my room be, because it's okay to hold on to clothing from the past like you all are, for, like memories from the past, but I'm more concerned with what this is going to look like in the future, <laughs> what, what she's going to do in the future. Sometimes you've got to break away from people in order to get to your breakthrough, and you're going to get up. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. Whoa, he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows. I love this, the same ones he sent out. He says, especially the widows and presented her to them alive. <laughs> this became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Prayer is so powerful. We, we like to quote oftentimes, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and you can call, like, wait, but, but sometimes it's like, I don't even have faith the size of a mustard seed. And yet right here, it wasn't Tabitha's faith. <laughs> it, it couldn't have been. She, she was dead. And maybe today you're here and you're like, I don't, I don't even have, I don't even have faith the size of a mustard seed. That's okay. I want you to know I have faith for you today. And I am going to pray in Jesus' name for you to get up. Right now, if you believe it, I believe someone is going to get up. I'm going to speak to your future. You're so consumed with how it was in the past. I want to speak to your future. I, I want to speak life. I want to speak hope that, that there's going to be healing, that there's going to be restoration. Yet, would you not focus on what was and right now discover what can be and what will be when you get up. So I pray right now in Jesus' name that you're going to get up. God, I thank you that someone, their marriage is going to get up, that it's not going to be buried. It's not going to end in divorce, but that marriage is going to get up. God, I thank you that some individual who's been drowning in depression, suffering severely, is going to get up today. God, I thank you that someone who is just lost right now is feeling like their life is, is worthless, is going to get up, and it is discover their worth in you and start living a passionate life, fulfilling their purpose.